back to another Java short tutorial. And in this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how you can use the scanner object to read input from the keyboard. So for that, I'm again going to create another class. Example 03 in this case. And again, I'm going to generate the main method. Uh, sorry, not 02, 03. So again, there we are. Let me just get rid of this comment line. So the first thing we need to do, if we are going to read input from the keyboard, is we have to declare our scanner object, which is the object that we will be using to read our actual input. So how do we do that? Best thing to do it is outside the main method, so it becomes what we call a global variable. And then declare it such as private static scanner. Then give it a name, for example input. And naturally, because scanner is not part of the uh, default Java functionality, we need to import this object, or more uh, accurately, import the library that contains this object. Fortunately, Eclipse can help us with that. So by hovering over it, it's actually saying, hey, you have to import the scanner from the java.util library. So let's just do that. So there you go, one line is added, import, import java.util.scanner. So now we can continue declaring. So again we say, well, we already have private static scanner input equals new scanner bracket bracket and to indicate we are going to read keyboard input we're going to say system dot in between those brackets and then continue again with a dot and say use delimiter and the delimiter is uh, basically the key on the keyboard that the scanner needs to respond to. And we indicate this key by providing the key code as a string. So double quote, double quote. And in this case we key in backslash r backslash n, which basically means that our scanner object will respond to the enter key on our keyboard. Having said that, this backslash r backslash n is for a Windows operating system. It is a different uh, code for a Mac operating system. If I remember correctly from the back of my head, it should be backslash R as opposed to backslash R backslash N. Okay, and as usual, we end our scanner declaration with a semicolon. So again, let's recap. Let me just make the screen just a little bit bigger for now. Private static scanner input equals new scanner between brackets system in dot use the limiter and between those brackets the string backslash r backslash n to make it respond to the enter key close the bracket and end with a semicolon okay then let's go and read some data from the uh, scanner object okay using the scanner object you can read all sorts of data but you need to determine in advance what kind of data it is that you intend to read from the keyboard. For example, there's a different line to read integer input than string input or double input. So say, in this particular case, I would like to read a integer input. Well, first of all, I need to prompt my user for it. So I'm going to use a system to auto print. System auto print does the exact same thing as print line, except for the fact that the cursor remains on the same line and doesn't go to the following line. So I could say uh, enter your age. Double dot. Okay, so that will basically appear in my console, and then I need to read the input. Input. So for reading the input, which is an integer, I first declare my variable integer age. Then I say equals. And what value will the integer h receive? Well, the value from the keyboard. So how do we read that? Well, we use our scanner object. So we say input dot next int, which means that a integer will be read and stored in the variable h. Right now, for the sake of convenience, I'm all doing all of this in the same line, but I could also do this declaration. like this. Uh, I declare the variable first and then I read the input. But since I prefer to keep my code very small and concise, I'm going to stick with this approach. So after the age is read, I simply want to print 
the age on my screen. So again, I'm going to use the print line with the text age, and I'm going to add the variable age at the back, so it ends up being printed. Okay, now let's run this program. So it says enter your age. So let's enter AH75, enter, and then it appears as the result of the system out of the print line. Okay, let's discuss a few more possibilities. And for that I'm just going to copy this code block, because I'm a lazy programmer and I don't want to type too much. Enter your name, which is a string, obviously. So I want to say string name equals input, not next string, but to read a string you actually have to use the operation next. So using input.next, a text value, a string value is read and stored in a variable name. And again, I'm printing it in the system out of print line. Okay, just for the sake of time, I'm going to comment out these two lines, because else we have to repeat the same example over and over again. Let's run again. Enter your name. Well, Jack Harkness. Press enter, and there you go. The name Jack Harkness is printed. Okay, and basically, that's all there is to it. But to give another example... Um, system auto. Well, let's do the lazy programmer thing. Copy again. Enter a price, which would be a double. So in this particular case, I'm going to say double price equals input dot next double. And as a result, I'm going to print price. Don't forget the semicolon. And price. So there we go. Let's run again. Enter a price. 9.95. Enter. And the price is 9.95. Basically, I can do this for pretty much any data type. Uh, with exception of the char. If you take a good look at the auto-completion you will see there's actually no next char in this whole list. So say if you want to receive a single character, what you can basically do is you can use the next operation and then use the char at index 0 to retrieve the char value. This is a little bit of a workaround, but it will do. Yeah. So, need to add a system to auto print line. Enter a character. And then, of course, I need to print it. Okay, so to run it, enter a character, for example, B, the character B will appear. This approach actually satisfies reading a single character, but it has one major drawback. Let me demonstrate that. So, uh, if I key in a character, I'm asked for a character and I say Ben, what will actually happen is that the input Ben will be accepted, but the first character will be retrieved. Um, this is not a very big problem, but not particularly ideal. If you want to read a single character, you actually have to use a slightly different approach that I will not be discussing in this video. Uh, but nonetheless, I hope I've provided a decent overview of how the scanner object, uh, the scanner object works and how input can be read. So, I'll see you next time.